any uses other than the primary purpose for which the data is recorded. So as an example, ICD-10 coding for reimbursement would be a secondary use when the um, coding is derived from the dictated discharge summary where the primary purpose would have been documentation plus or minus uh, communication. Or, as another example, communicable disease reports to the health department could be derived from routine lab culture reports where the primary purpose of the data is communication to the ordering physician and the secondary use is epidemic detection. So there are some examples where these uh, secondary uses uh, are beginning to work, where this ideal is, is happening. Microbiology laboratory might have a positive salmonella culture. They'll send an electronic report to the physicians caring for, caring for the patient and also send reports to the local and state reportable disease registries. And in places where this is in, in uh, active use, it reduces the time to reporting of uh, reportable infectious diseases by several days in most cases. So that's a, a, a very positive example of how this uh, sort of secondary use can take place. If we're going to make advantage or take advantage of data reuse, it requires that we be able to query databases that contain coded clinical data, systematically retrieve according to the uh, general criteria, aggregate the data in ways that are not directly coded and, and um, look at the, the overall meaning of what's been recorded. So imagine that you have a decision support rule that says that if the patient has had a myocardial infarction but has no congestive heart failure and they have no AV block and they don't have asthma or peripheral vascular disease or type 1 diabetes and they're not taking a beta blocker, then you should consider adding beta blocker therapy. Well, that's, a, that's good advice. Um, it's something that an individual clinician can remember uh, if they think of it, but we'd like to have our electronic health system provide reminders if there's a patient who has no contraindications, has had an MI, is not on beta blockers, and probably should be started. This would enable us to practice more the way we really intend to practice. But in order to do that, we've got to have reuse of encoded data. We need to know, does this patient have congestive heart failure? Do they have AB block? Do they have asthma? Do they have peripher peripheral vascular disease? Any of its subtypes. How would we get our systems to know that? There are also some dilemmas requiring attention about the uh, creation and use of secondary data. The first one is the observation that the value of secondary data mainly accrues to parties other than those who collect it. Very often the people who are recording the data at the bedside aren't the ones who are most interested in doing the secondary analyses. But along with that goes this other observation that the value of secondary data depends on its quality and the quality of the data is directly proportional to the care with which it's, it's collected. And so we have a, a requirement, I think, to pay attention to providing feedback to those who are collecting the data on the quality of the data, making it part of their professional uh, requirements, part of their professional pride that they collect good quality data, and that part of our understanding of what it means to take good care of patients. Okay, on to extensions and reference sets. Um, local extension is a fact of life. With any standard, we're not going to get by with just the international core or just with the national extensions. So, <clears throat> if so-called local identifiers are added to patient records, it's unlikely they will remain solely within the organization where they were added, since patients and their records are inherently mobile. So SNOMED has provided an extension namespace mechanism that's intended to allow organizations other than IHTSDO to create and distribute valid identifiers. The main benefit would be the prevention of collisions, that you're not going to have a code in a field that you can't identify as being an extension code because it's got that extension namespace in it. You'll, you'll not have a collision with the other codes. 
And the other benefit is that software systems can be built to either ignore certain namespaces or to allow special handling of namespaces. If you can look up on the, uh, on the internet who is responsible for this particular namespace, you might be able to get some additional information for automatic processing of data that contains those codes. So proper use of namespaces is the responsibility of the namespace holder in order to facilitate the proper use of these. So an extension namespace is really contained within a part of the code and it's controlled by an organization other than IHTSDO. In addition, national releases can add content that's not required in the international release, such as leave granted under the Mental Health Act 1983. That's a code that's been moved to the UK extension. Or even local or regional content, such as this uh, concept from Multnomah County, Oregon. And here's a diagram of the uh, SNOMED clinical terms identifier with the uh, seven digits of the namespace identified here. And in the partition identifier, a one in this third digit over represents the fact that the next seven digits are the namespace. And then the extension item identifier takes the other uh, eight digits of, of the identifier. And the check digit is on the right. So that's a little bit about extensions. Now let's talk about reference sets. People often confuse extensions and subsets. Um, so we used to call these subsets, we now call them reference sets. Reference sets are really intended to uh, identify components, sets of components of SNOMED that are to be used for a particular purpose and to add additional information surrounding them to make them usable for particular purposes. So we've come up with a number of different uh, generic types of reference sets. There are simple reference sets which are just collections of codes. Uh, there are groups of reference sets, so a reference set which contains other reference sets. Uh, tagged reference sets where you add a tag to each component. Language reference sets which include the um, different dialects and different language translations. Navigation reference sets which allow us to navigate through the hierarchies in a different way than just the ISA hierarchy. Aggregation reference sets for doing different kinds of aggregation than the ISAs allow. And uh, prioritized reference sets. Here's a navigation reference set example. Um, a GP might want to navigate directly from virus down to influenza A virus. If you look at the ISA hierarchy in the organisms um, section, you have to start at virus. You have to know that influenza A is an RNA virus and that it's an enveloped, single-stranded RNA virus without a DNA step in the life cycle. And then <laughs> further, more and more information. And you, do you remember, does anybody remember that influenza A is in the family Orthomyxoviridae, um, it would be very difficult to navigate all those levels to find influenza A virus if you're a GP. You won't remember where it belongs and there's multiple other choices at each of those levels. So taking a navigational reference set, we can take the common viruses, uh, influenza and measles, mumps, rubella, rubella and hepatitis viruses and so on and put them right at the top level. So that's an example of how we would use reference sets to make navigation easier. In general, making SNOMED usable requires the design and selection of usable components. So we might want to have a problem list reference set for use in the problem list in the patient record. You might want to have a primary care reference set that includes the diseases and um, findings that are commonplace in primary care. Um, we have a non-human reference set. There are a number of diseases in SNOMED that are specific to animals um, and so for human medicine we might want to remove that reference set from displays. Making SNOMED usable, usable then also requires hiding some of the complexity from users, some of its size um, and some of its uh, uh, intricacy. So one way of doing that is to allow users